Hi, we're here at ICAST 2015 in the Mud Hole booth, and uh, we happen to come across Larry Dahlberg from uh, the Hunt for Big Fish walking around. And, and Larry, we know that you build your own custom fishing rods. What are some of the advantages that you feel uh, building your own fishing rods does for you on the water? I can get exactly what I want, and there's no other way to do that. When you build your own fishing rods, do you take into consideration the different length handles for your for the different types of fishing that you're going to be doing, whether you're going to be casting from a boat or a kayak or wade fishing? Of course. Okay. And uh, when it comes to guides, the types of lines that you use, you take that in consideration? Uh, and how hard I'm going to pull. When you're anchoring on a fish hard and you're really rolling it over hard, there's a tremendous amount of torque sideways and so it just depends on how hard I pull and as to which which guide I choose. All right Larry is there any uh, tricks or, or considerations that you take into, into play when you're building and designing your uh, fishing rods? I throw a lot of big lures and uh, one of the most important and I use longer rods uh, there's a lot of myths about rods I heard a guy on TV just the other day and it makes me angry a longer rod gives you more leverage it's just the opposite. A longer rod gives you less leverage, but it gives you a great deal more tip speed. But what it costs you is, I won't call it weight, but it, let's call it torque. If I take a seven and a half foot rod, a finished rod like the one I'm holding in my hand, even though it's very lightweight, just holding it like this, if I had a, a way to uh, put a little uh, torque machine on this where I put a, a scale out in that end and balanced it. You do the math and you find that there's probably close to a pound of torque on your hand just holding it. And we worry about a rod that weighs three or four or five ounces, a half an ounce. Well, that torque on your hand is a way bigger deal in terms of making you tired. Yeah, the fatigue over a day's fishing. Over a day's fishing. So what I do is uh, I put a balancer butt cap uh, on the back of these things and sometimes it'll take as much as three ounces away to make them balance but guess what at the end of the day you are actually less tired because you haven't been fighting the torque on uh, lighter rods just adding that weight uh, also uh, gives you balance and there is absolutely no question that it increases your ability to feel what's going on when you do this balancing system do you include your reel when you're setting up your uh, yeah, rod absolutely just hold it just like you're fishing slide it on and uh, just get it so that it, it feels light in the tip and, and balances. And what you'll notice is most guys that are fishing a jig, you'll notice if they're fishing with a spinning rod, the, the thing will be up in the air high like this, or with a bass rod, you start out here and you're up here. Well, guess what? If you put a, a little tube so you could balance, so you could mount this thing on a, so it would hold itself up, take a bait casting reel, bait casting rod, stick it in. It balances at about this position. And the reason that you end up holding it there is because it balances yeah, there and you will naturally go there. But what happens is a fish bites, you got to reel down, bam! With a balancer on it, what you're going to find is you're going to be fishing at a, at a lower angle because you've got, it balances and will feel comfortable there. You get a fish bite, boom, you've got it. Your reaction is probably 36 inches quicker than it would have been without it, not to mention the you know, additional uh, sensitivity. So the amount of fatigue that you're going to endure over the course of a day, if you were to balance your rod, you'll be able to outfish uh, somebody fishing a store-bought rod that's not balanced then. If all things were equal to begin with, and the other, the other consideration is this, people talk about rod length. My rod, here's a blank. It's a seven and a half footer. I'm fishing with a seven and a half foot rod. Well, that's true to a degree. But it isn't about how long the rod is or the shaft is. What it's about, how much blade do you have in front of your handle? And that's really where I measure rod length from. And as you're uh, building uh, rods, determining the length of this handle is going to make a lot of difference in how much weight it will take to balance it. It's going to make a lot of difference in how much tip speed that you're able to generate with this thing. The shorter you make it, the more pulling power you have, I should say, the less leverage you give up. The longer you make it, the more speed you can generate. 
And there's often a very, very fine balance uh, between those two things. And it's just a matter of time and building a bunch of rods and getting it tuned in just to the lures that, that you use. Well, that's part of it. You know, if you're building rods for specific applications, you're going to need uh, different rod lengths, different handle lengths. And in turn, you're going to actually balance the rods differently each time you build a rod. Right. And, and guys, some guys will palm a rod. That's great. Some guys will actually fish with their hand ahead of the bait casting or reel and you know tuck it in here it's all just a matter of your own personal fishing style and that's why building your own rods to me is a, a very very good idea you get a great advantage when uh, on the water well grill area appreciate the information great to see you hope you have a great show great to see you and uh, I'm so impressed with uh, the way you guys ship me stuff that uh, I'm just glad you're around that's all <laughs> well thanks Larry thanks.